Hey everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about how I designed this, you could call it a writing desk, computer desk. I'm going to use it as a computer desk. It's roughly 50 inches wide, it stands 30 inches tall, and I think there's some accessories that can be made later on, like a pull-out drawer or even a place for a printer. Um, I bought a lot of walnut, and when I mean a lot, I bought a 150 board foot lot of walnut. We can call it character grade. Um, some people would probably call it trash grade. So you can see from this, this is primarily just completely sap wood. So I had quite a few boards that were sap and initially I was gonna stain this so it was all kind of uniform, but after I water popped it, I kind of liked the way that it looked. So I, I think one of the parts of this video is just use what you have. If it's going in your house, you know, it, it's practice if nothing else. But between the walnut top and the eight quarter poplar for the base, I was at $94. So not saying everyone would be a fan of this walnut top, but um, using the CNC to mill all of the parts, it, it's a pretty simple process. Um, I'll show the design process through V-Carve. I did use the table saw to cut the half laps, but that is something that can be done on the CNC. You'll see in the video for the joinery, I did use the domino to get the side pieces put together of the, the desk, but I think I have a workaround with that too. I'm gonna show in the video. And um, I hope you like it and thanks for watching. Okay, I'll go through some of the basic design process that I went through in designing the, the desk. Um, the first thing I did with the top is I took measurements of my my base and then drew this out in the software and then drew the outline of the entire size of the top that I had. Then I dropped in where my laptop was, my monitor and all that stuff. So then I could put my through holes for my wires and then this is the outlet, the wireless charger. Then I knew that those parts wouldn't hit this frame and they were kind of where I wanted them to be on the desktop I still haven't hooked everything up so we're gonna hope that it's it's on the desktop where it needs to be so with the base um, said in the video I used the domino to connect the legs to the upper portion of the um, the desk side and I was thinking about it later on as I mentioned in the video that you know I could have done something like this where I made a, a keyhole in order to connect those two pieces and it would be a really really strong joint too um, not saying that the Festool that the Domino isn't a strong joint but um, this would be a super strong joint right here so um, I wouldn't stress a whole lot about that but this is something that you know that could be done on your parts if you want to move your you know combine two parts and all I did with this I just took a circle um, as I've shown in previous videos I just took a box let's say a, a one by one box and I split this box in half um, when I'm designing stuff I like to use mirror copy so I know that I'm good on both sides of of the piece so I know everything is in alignment and we're just gonna drop this circle here um, and this is not gonna be perfect I just wanted to show how I kinda went through the process here I'll go outside the line. Um, come back and delete this. And then I'm just going to go in and make a mirrored copy. And then I want to combine these two. So I'm going to join them. Um, so what you could do at this point, now that you have this done, or let's say we're not going to combine them first. We can go into node selection mode. So we've got two nodes here. Um, 
So what we can do is left click on one of these nodes and just use your arrow keys and move this part where you want it. Um, you know, I don't know that I would go like super extreme. You need to keep in mind whatever bit you're going to use to cut this out needs to be able to make this sweep. Um, this needs to be cleaned up too, but you get the idea of of how I made these this, so to speak. So anyway, um, enough about that. But yeah, just just a reminder you. What I was thinking in my mind anyway is that if you're going to use a quarter inch bit to cut this out, you need to make sure that your bit can make this sweep. And then, of course, use the same bit to cut out both pieces. So enough about that part. I'll move into the the design. So the, the desk um, for a typical desk is 30 inches tall, just like a kitchen table. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to make a box that's 29 by 29. And when I say 30 inches tall, that's with the, um, the top attached. So for this part of it, um, I know I want the base to be 29 inches tall. So here's our frame for that. Um, as I did before, I'm just going to drop a line straight down. Um, I'm going to hold shift, left click, and make sure that that's centered on the work, and it is. And we'll just start drawing what, what we think we're going to want here. Maybe we'll come up with a new design. And I'm going quick with the um, alignment tools. You know, I've said in a previous video that you can get away from using all of the XY coordinates when you're doing your design stuff. Um, just by using the alignment tools. And I think I want this upper portion to be like eight inches tall, I think. So I should have done that before. Or mentioned that before, rather. So my, my top is roughly 24 inches wide, so this will represent the top that we're using for this design. Um, and then let's come in, we'll draw a pretty tight arch here on the side. Draw a tight arch on the bottom. Um, for this half lap, I made that three quarters of an inch deep. So let's say that's going to be an inch and a half wide. And then we're going to go up. I forgot about these shortcut keys down here. So I've been trying to get in the habit of using those. So I know this looks kind of kind of goofy right now, but um, just bear with me, it'll make sense. And we'll go here, here. Okay. So now here's the fun part. We'll just start snipping some of this stuff away and see what we're see what we're left with. And for this um Delete that. And just as before, all right, we're going to move this back up to the top here. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we keep that where we need it to be. Um, and I just see that I missed. that part there. So go back. Um, I'm going to move this box up out of the way a little bit here. 
then we're just going to mirror this. I'm going to hold shift and shift again and we're just going to join this together. So there we have one completed vector for the top and it took just a few minutes. And it still doesn't mean you can't come in and you know completely fine tune this um, using the node selection mode or add different shapes whatever you want to do. For the legs um, I kind of made it simple on my design. I just went to the corner and just drew a line down. If you hold, um, hit your space bar, you can stay in that mode. And so that's how I designed my legs. So in just a few minutes, I'm not saying this is pretty by any means, but um, this can all be adjusted. You know, you can add in your joinery. Um, if we go into node selection mode again, you know, you can pull this stuff down if you want. Um, like I said before, I like to use the, the arrow keys on my keyboard. If, um, I mean, you can make this stuff pretty intense, however you want to do it. So this is what I did, and this is how I designed it. Um, with the half lap, what I'll say, if you are, I'm just going to show this really quick. We're going to do a um, inch and a half block here. When you go to cut your half laps, if it's on the table saw, I use the table saw to cut mine. I could have used the CNC. Um, this part, this piece that goes in, when you plane it or cut it on the CNC, of course, it needs to be this same width. But in order to determine how much to remove from the top, actually from the inside, this is three quarters of an inch deep. If this is, if your block is two inches, let's say, you're going to have to remove an inch and a quarter of material. So the only part that's left of this piece that slips in is this three quarters of an inch at the top. Hopefully that makes sense. So anyway, that's the way that I designed this table, um, this desk base. It could work the same way with tables and um, dining tables, that is. The other thing I wanted to show and it was kind of like a happy accident. I didn't know that this was um, even possible on here. But if I come into preview toolpaths here, this this screen always gave me trouble with moving objects around and kind of wanting to take a better look at it. So you can see I've got my tabs and everything, but if you hold the left click on your mouse and the right click on your mouse, you can move this piece side to side and um, you know on the plane without the the twisting part of it so anyway that's a that was a little happy accident but I um, hope this makes sense again I appreciate everybody watching and any questions just drop them in the comments below thank you All right, so I'm starting the lumber milling process. Uh, first step, you know, face joint. Make sure you have one face that's flat, um, and then edge joint one side. So at this point, we have S2S lumber, so surfaced on two sides. Um, and I have to say, this was some pretty rough-looking lumber. Um, you know, I said in the beginning, I bought a lot of this stuff, so just going through and these were the ugliest of the boards so I wanted to see what I could do with them. Um, you'll see after I put these through the planer that some parts on the bottom weren't completely flat so what I did is I left them on the bottom side of the desk and then when I epoxy filled the um, you know the knot holes and everything that made the bottom so it was flat. I just over poured with epoxy there. 
um, which is some pretty nasty stuff, not my favorite stuff to work with. But in this case, um, you, know, you can see that part of the board where it still has some saw marks left on it or some cob or whatever. Put that on the underside and just, you know, if you're concerned about it being completely flat, you can always add some epoxy. And what I thought about doing with, um, you know, this lumber, since there was a lot of sapwood in there, I thought maybe I would just try to stain it and get it all to match. But after I water popped it, I just figured I'd send it and see what it looks like in the end. And um, I don't think it turned out too bad. Um, so now we have both faces are now coplanar. So we have s3s at this point so we've got surface three sides so the next thing we want to do is go to the table saw and we're going to rip this lumber so that now we have s4s so now we're surfaced on four sides and we can start with the glue up of our panel after this um, sometimes it needs a little touch up you know from the joiner what i do before i start um well before i go to the table saw is i write the dimensions down on the end of the lumber of what i want it to be you know milled to the final dimension and it just saves a little time when you're there at the table saw making your rips and everything So now we're going to get started on the joinery. Um, like I said, I used the domino to attach the legs to the upper part of the, the desk. Um, I think that keyhole, like I talked about in, in the software earlier, would be another solution too. I think that would probably make things a little bit easier. Um, the challenging part of this was to get the glue up done. So if I did have to do it over again, I would definitely use the keyhole part and not even fool with the domino for this. Um, the back stretcher, I didn't show that. Um, I did use dominoes there too, but honestly, pocket screws would be fine. You know, you can plug them. This is going to be painted, so it's not like it has to be completely perfect. So here I'm working on the, the half lap. So this is the... Um, the upper portion that gets attached to the desk so once this is done for the fit and everything um, it's a simple process of getting this desk put together once I did have the the upper we can call them rails in place I just pre-drilled after I glued and, and put a screw in there just to hold it but um as you can see there just checking the fit before you know, final assembly.
So for the finish, I use Gilboy's Hard Wax Oil. This is a one part. Um, I've tried Rubio, Nurtura, I think is another one. Um, I'm just not a big fan of the hard wax oils that, you know, you have to, you have to mix. And then there's a little bit left in the can and it goes bad. So, um, I gave Gilboys a shot. I've used their wax before. So I wanted to see, you know, how their hard wax oil worked. And I use this on the baby crib. So it's, um, food safe, um, safe for toys for, for kids and all of that stuff. Um, super easy to apply. So you just, you know, rub in a, a liberal amount and then just go back and wipe off any excess, let it dry. It takes eight hours according to the can to dry. Um, two coats are recommended. So I did do two coats. And then after that second coat was dry, I went back with, um, the wax so here's the desktop. Um, I was a little curious how the oil would work with this sapwood of this walnut because, you know, sapwood, um, spalting, anything like that, it tends to absorb a lot of the finish. But I was really impressed with just one coat, how it turned out. So with the um, hard wax oil all applied, now it's time to use... Well, now it's time I went over the top with this pure gold from Gilboys. So even if you have, I'll say this, even with a polyurethane finish, as long as you let that finish cure, you can go back um, over top of that finish with this wax or a lacquer finish, a lac finish. The most important thing, well, a couple important things, make sure that your finish is really cured. Um, so lacquers, polyurethane, a good seven days. And the biggest mistake when you're waxing your furniture is you need to allow the wax time to dry. So you want the turpentine to completely expel from the wax before you go back and try to buff it. So just using a um, 4 aught steel wool, um, applying the wax, really simple to apply. And then... Um, Gilboy's calls for 20 minutes to let the um, the wax dry and then here I'm just going back and I'm just buffing the wax off um, you want to use an open um, cotton wrap an open weave cotton rag so anytime that you've applied wax and you see that it's smearing or smudging it's because you're heating that wax back up again so um, open weave rag and just go back and lightly buff the finish off and it turned out it was a really really nice finish I did go back and apply a second coat of wax you want to let that dry at least um, you know a few days in between it calls for but I'm um, super smooth finish and really really pleased with with how this turned out so um, if you see the slab that's in the back you can see the really nice sheen that's on that